I got a quick question. Did Dominic Cruz have a temperature? Because if he did, I want him to know. It's not the Rona. It's his legacy going up in flames. I'm like worried that they're going to catch a booger and like push it back to my brain. <laughs> so I'm like trying to make sure that like my nose is clear of any extra stuff. <laughs> But I'm glad that they're doing it, you know? It, it'll give us peace of mind, so I'm glad. Yeah, I flew in today with the team. And it's just, it's, it's a little different because you know everybody's got their mask on and uh, I mean, I'm getting, I'm getting blood drawn, dude, before my fight. You know, see this finger? <laughs> it's a piece. Carbohydrates wise after wins, sweet potato, rice, pasta, what's your preference? Sweet potatoes, rice, and pasta. Sweet. <laughs> a little bit of everything. Yeah, I got I'll you. Have a little all right. bit of everything. I'll have it all ready for you. That excites me. Now you're getting me pumped up. There you go. Talk so we about do. food. <laughs> <laughs> Cutting weight on a plane is never fun. You know? And you're just like I'm spraying everything with antibacteria. <laughs> I got a lot of good weight cut at my house, so it was nice. What's up, guys? See ya. So it was nice to be able to get the weight cut down at my house, you know, instead of having to be here in this hotel room. If I could just show up, Henry shows up to my front yard and I just f him up in my front yard, that would be ideal. But I can't do that. For that? Yeah, that'd be a lot better. But we, oh well, this arena will work. <laughs> We'll get a hold of you, let you know what's going on. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'll let you know. Where are the room keys at? Uh, you check in with Fred. Yep. Saturday. Come on. Saturday, we're going to hug. Come on. I, I thought that was you. I <laughs> <laughs> look the same, you short bastards. Hey, it's how you mad at the elephant would be king of the jungle. Don't sleep on Cejudo. He says he's going to sleep Cejudo. Ooh, good thing his coach is a first responder. Could tell him to bring an N95 mask and an oxygen tank. Come on. Play ball. Yo, what's up, guys? We're just getting ready for practice. Got me and my crew. Let's go. Practice and killing, baby. Here we are, social distancing from everybody. We got the people necessary for UFC 249. The team's here, the crew. Let's f go! And the crew. Don't wait for Coach Eddie to get him into the roll, Coach. Into the roll. Coach Eddie just literally just got here. We got the full team here, we got the full squad. You play chess? Yes, play, sir. I'll play chess. Oh, we got to get my, Me and my son play every day. Let's go. I destroy him. I know he's on the eight. I know, I know. He's good, man. I'm just being, I'm just being real. I'm just being real. We're here to take care of business, man. One team, multiple dreams. Love to hang out with you guys, but we gotta get real. UFC 249, coming at you harder than a Dars. Yeah, so just come to me when you're starting to set things up. Back of house area, especially the mix zones that we were talking about. But there is plenty of space. There are no fans. So we do have space to push uh, our stuff around and kind of figure out where everything goes. Let's do a walkthrough and uh, keep our distance. Normally, we run uh, a really tight shift. We come in, we set our show up in a matter of hours, and we're ready to go. This one with social distancing in mind and trying to keep as few people on site as possible in setting everything up, we spread our load out over the course of an entire 24 hour period. Starting with this morning, bringing in the rigging first, they're all here by themselves. It's going slow, but that's what it's meant to when you've got half the number of crew that you normally bring in. And the next ones will be lighting. Um, Octagon will be tomorrow. So by the end of the day tomorrow, we'll have the whole show set up, which we normally can do in less than a day. You look good, just square up the basket. This is huge for the sporting world, showing what we can do and how we can produce a show safely for both the crew, the athletes, you know, will only lead to more organizations being able to do the same thing. 
just being able to go through all these steps and get through this process that no one's done before. So we're laying the groundwork. At the end of the day, people are looking to us to have a successful show and come away with this with a good framework of how we can continue to do this for the foreseeable future right now. prepare for several guys at once you know you're not just focused on one person but are there any particular tweaks or changes that you're making specifically for Justin absolutely not I'm not worried about what they're doing I watch a lot of film he's got a lot of holes in his game uh, he's a tough game opponent man but uh, the guys that he fought he got my leftovers and he went over there and he finished them but they were already broken anytime I ever fought an opponent they just break mentally and physically and spiritually they just can't they just can't handle inside that octagon Gaethje's not going to be anything different from these guys. I'm not going to hold back. Punches, knees, kicks, and elbows. I'm bringing out the blades for this fight. Going against a guy like Tony Ferguson, are you concerned at all about the, uh, that the discipline will go out the window? Do you think that this will be an extra difficult challenge to, to, to stay disciplined in this one? I don't know. Uh, it's a puzzle, you know, and I'm excited to go out there and use my skill set that I have been working on my whole life to try and figure out this puzzle. Um, and he has to not get hit. The winner of, of your fight on Saturday will likely get a title shot next. Does that add any extra motivation for what you're trying to do on Saturday? To be honest, I don't worry about uh, I don't worry about that anymore. What I'm focused on is this fight on Saturday. What is ne what next? I don't know. Have a good day. You too. How do you deal with, you know, Francis being a, you know, a counterfighter, being careful about attacking him because he has so shown that tendency before to where he will sit back a little bit? First things first, let me put it as this. I'm here because I want to be a champion. And and after that, I want to stay champion. So this Saturday, go in the octagon, knock Francis out, and then walk away and get my hands raised up to another one. What'd you get in here? Oh, we got in yesterday. Did you bring the RV? Oh, yeah, yeah, parked right outside. Nice. So you get to run this one back again. Tell us how, how excited are you for this fight and, and the fact you know you got the win the first time. Yeah, it's been a while since we fought. You know, Cowboy's a totally different fighter. Um, actually, we're, we're pretty good friends now. We, we've, um, we fought way back, I mean, seven years ago probably. But uh, when you beat somebody, it's, it's always there in the back of their head. You know, no matter what, how many, I don't care how many fights you have past that, your loss is a loss. Um, the guy who he is, he's just ready to fight. And I love that. You know, he, same thing with me. I'm ready to fight anytime, anyplace, anywhere. And it's going to be a striking match for the that the world wants to see. And that's what I'm excited to go out there and do. You know, every division, they say, I want to be the Cowboy Cerrone in this division. I want to fight you know, five, six times a year. It's funny Obviously, they say that until, until it's you're... time to do it. That's the funny thing. Everyone <laughs> wants to do it. Like, oh, you, I want to be like that. I want to fight. And then the UFC calls them and they're like, ooh, who? Ah, uh, next week, yeah, you know. So that's the funny thing. But when they like the UFC called me, I didn't even know who I was fighting. They said May 9th. I said, yeah, let's go, you know. And that's it's hard. To, uh, everyone wants to do cowboy until it's time to do cowboy. So uh, came down to Jacksonville to get in a backyard fight. Here I am. You know, how does this story end for you? You you get to fight one another now. If you were to write this story right now, how you want it to play out perfectly on Saturday night? What does it look like? You know, people a lot of times talk about the, the journey. I, to me, it's a lot of times it's about the destiny. And, uh, you know, the destination is, the overall objective is to get your hand raised. So that's, that's what I envision. And, uh, you know, when I'm firing at all cylinders, I don't think there's any man, any human being on earth that could beat me. Do you feel that coming back after uh, more than three years uh, adds that to, to the legacy that you are the greatest in, in the Bantamweight division. Not only have I beaten uh, pretty much every single guy that he's beaten, but I beat him for titles. And other than Marlon Marais, um, I've, I've definitely had a lot more title fights and a lot more time in that octagon than him. All that stuff added up, it's ring generalship. It's understanding where to be. It's understanding how to use the time. It's understanding how to use the fight. Uh, in every single minute, in every single second of every single round. And um, that's what I do very well. Thank you, Dominic. Thank you, guys. Have a good day. Thank you.